The policy has not changed. It's affordable housing. It has always been affordable housing since Shagari's time. The question is what is affordable? What's the definition of affordable? And then what's the program that delivers on a year-on-year basis? Uh, I was told in the ministry that this is the first time we're having a national housing program since Shagari. So all the other interventions have just been sporadic. They have not been on a nationwide basis. We're building in 33 states. And what we're building is a pilot. We want to test that pilot for acceptability because part of the lessons we learned from the past is that in some parts of the country, they didn't accept the design. Nobody consulted them. So we want to test for acceptability. We want to also test for affordability. How much can people pay? How much are they willing to pay? So before we even did the design, we sent architects around. We took surveys from people from different states, from different parts of the country in order to model the design. So it's a very, very serious process. Now, again, I caution about the tyranny of instant results. Once this model settles down, then we can do it every year because we now know how to do it. But in the interim, it is delivering on what housing should deliver on. 653 contractors are beneficiaries. 13,000 people are employees. About 40,000 are indirect employees benefiting in one way supplies and all of that. That's what, that's what Housing First does. That's why you are seeing GDP beginning to change. That's why you are seeing more demand for building materials, sand, laterite, granite. That's why if you look at the industrial sector where there was some growth too, it's still and housing component related matters. So success is already achieved just by starting construction, but we haven't finished. Now, I think we, we must then flip back. What happened yesterday? There's a housing program that we are reviewing now under the past administration, the immediate past administration, where they set out to build one million houses. It was to be delivered in batches of 100,000 each across Nigeria. The first phase was, nine, was later reduced to 900 and something houses. Later, they reduced it to 625 houses. But as we speak today, after paying out, I think, 13 billion, only 19 houses have been built. In the design, they were building four bedroom, five bedroom, three bedroom houses. For who? Who did they consult with? Then they gave it to a foreigner from Oman who posted a personal guarantee and just dribbled everybody generally. So we're going to that site. We looked at it. So how do we recover this? But it just tells you how difficult housing can be. And Again, we have thought through this process. We are not changing the policy, but we are creating a program, a program which if we successfully implement, becomes the model for annual national housing intervention that continues to drive a housing economy. We don't have a housing economy yet. We need to create a housing economy. And it's by being patient, being methodical, and by persevering, not looking for quick fix that you can build that. And if you see the promise of what it holds, just in a pilot stage, you know that if you get it right, it's an explosion. Positive explosion for the economy. Because every flat then means that demand for cotton, demand for bed, demand for furniture, demand for electric iron, demand for solar, demand for LED, but it's, it's, it's phenomenal. But you must get it right. Some states we don't have land yet. Uh, one or two states where we have land, we have local issues. The site had to be moved because when we looked at it, we didn't think it was practical and suitable for our purposes. We wanted to build where we were close to a road 
or to the promise of a road. The, in the housing ministries, we have engineers, we have um, uh, architects, etc. We sat down with them, asked them to uh, sit down and come up with uh, housing uh, design, post that will be acceptable to every part of Nigeria, because. Uh, we have a cultural difference, religious difference, uh, depending on one fat to another. Uh, they come up with an acceptable design that is acceptable to almost all the six geo uh, uh, geopolitical uh, zones that we have. And uh, we have uh, done a pilot uh, scheme of that in the 36 states of the Federation. I went out and uh, on tour to inspect uh, supervise uh, the project as uh, it is uh, going on. I inspected, I think, the whole of uh, North East, North West, uh, North Central, and uh, part of southeast and uh, south west and south south almost the six uh, geopolitical zones one we want to know the uh, we, we want to know the number of uh, Nigerians that will uh, benefit uh, from uh, say a three bedroom plot or two bedroom plot. For every house that you know that is constructed, you have an engineer, you have the uh, supervisor, you have the mason, the carpenter, the electrician, the laborer, etc. And apart from that, you also have you know people that will supply. Uh, them with uh, these products that they will use to construct these houses. The painter, the electrical material that uh, uh, will be the wire, etc., the plugs, the switches that will be supplied, uh, the paints, those that will supply the zinc, the wood, etc. But we all make sure that the house must be a hundred percent Nigerian. This is um, a deliberate policy of this government. From the campaign promises of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, he promised to deliver houses and we are delivering houses knowing how important it is for people to have decent accommodation worthy of being called human beings. We set out to do that and as a result of that, this administration is rolling out housing projects in all the states of the Federation. We've created a lot of opportunities. Over 500 contractors are involved. Over 13,000 people are engaged directly. Over 41 persons are involved indirectly in different spheres of construction, from physical participation to sales of materials to sales of food. So the multiplier effect is immense. Really, numbers are not what we are tied down to. We are tied down to being consistent in delivering houses. If we deliver 10 houses in a year, and we do it consistently for 20 years, 
will have what number? If every government, after our years in government, will deliver a particular number of house annually, then would have achieved a lot. Yes, I was uh, privileged to have gone to Gombe State, where there were 19 contractors on site. I was in Bauchi, there were 40 contractors on site. I was in Jos, specifically just East Local Government. There were 40 contractors on that side too. On all the sites, completion level on the average is about uh, 45 to 50 percent. And um, you could see the faces of the, those communities where we visited. It was a thing of joy. First and foremost, the project that was taken there. Secondly, to us, they said, we are the first set of government officials at this level to have gone there. They came out celebrating why they've been employed, they've been turned into traders, therefore they're also in business because they are selling things that they were not used to selling before and they've also seen the window of infrastructure getting to them. They actually appealed that we should speak to the governor of the state to do a road coming to that place and we promised them, we said there is no way we will drop a project like that in that place without creating an access. Again, that's the difference between this government's housing policy and the other government's housing policy. It used to be a one shoe fits all. But this time around, we are saying, look at the peculiarities of our communities, societies, personal needs and then we'll come up with houses that will benefit each and everyone's need. For example, if for someone like me in Gombe may aspire to have four wives, I will set out to do a project that will accommodate four wives. For someone who aspires to have one wife, will prefer maybe a one bedroom apartment ensued or whatever. Now, there are also indigent persons. Their own requirement will be different from mine. If you again look at our earning capacity, if you look at our earning capacity, there are people in strata of employment. Their own needs will also vary because their cost, their total take home at the end of the day after retirement when they want to own a home may not be exactly what I can have. Now again, but there are people also that are not within the salary bracket. They don't earn income from government, so they don't contribute to the National Housing Fund. Now what do you do with those strata of people? You also have to take care of their needs. So what do we do? Our conception now for this category of people is maybe set out cooperative societies, because we have them in their numbers. People go and do ASUSU and uh, here and there, but they are not government. They don't go to bank. Their bank is under their bed and so on. So we also have the need for those kind of people. Their own needs is also not the kind of houses that you and I may like. So we'll now consult with them. What kind of houses do you have? Or do you want? They will tell us and we'll say, okay, we'll do it. Well, we set up a committee, internal committee now, to start drawing up conditions for eligibility. We will expect that people who contribute to the National Housing Fund with the Federal Mortgage Bank will be very and highly eligible people who will draw up rules of the game. Uh, I have had the privilege to do this at sub-national level with the Lagos Home. So we drew up this thing. It was a computerized online module. People applied. You don't need to know anybody. You don't need to pay anybody. If you meet the criteria, you are eligible. And many people Long after I've left office, see me at places and say, look, I own a house because of you, but we never met. I want to say thank you. I hope that we can replicate that on a national scale, and our team is already working. Once we have the model, 
Then writing a program to computerize it is the easiest thing. But we need to then know how much it costs to deliver the house. So we have to price the infrastructure into it and then know the total cost. And then survey the market and see whether that one bedroom flat in this city is competitive and comparable to the one bedroom flat that is by private sector. That's, those, that's the work that must be done before we begin to ask for results. That's when we now define affordability. That's when we can say as a government, okay, we are waiving X amount on the cost of infrastructure. That's our subsidy. Well, I've told you one of the ones we inherited, and there are quite a number like that. Uh, over the last uh, 10 years, we have reviewed all of the PPP models. People have claimed to be able to do what they cannot do. Uh, they haven't been subject to the appropriate due diligence they should have been subject to that would have revealed that they didn't have the capacity. The, our haste to promote private sector uh, in the past uh, to do PPPs, uh, really we inherited PPP contracts that should have delivered 21,000 houses over 10 years and they delivered only 2,000. So we are reviewing all of those uh, and trying to see, in some cases, people have just taken loans after signing agreements and just disappeared. So we will be referring some of them. Work has started, really. Some of them were referred to law enforcement. Some were referred to law firms uh, through the parastatals for debt recovery and all of that. And then we are looking at how to uh, complete some of the uh, some are close to completion, I must admit, so it's just a, a short hop to complete them. So, uh, and I announced recently that we have about 3,032 houses uh, under the Federal Mortgage Bank Estate Development Loans Program that are now available for sale to members of the public. I think, again, the idea of a mortgage uh, in the form that we know it uh, challenges us to think. And our own thinking has taken us to cooperatives. And the reason we've gone to cooperatives is that we've seen that people do things in clusters, in, in groups. People have assets in the informal form. It's not in the formal sector. So that person has land but it's not in the form that will qualify him for a mortgage. Why can't we help him use what he knows how to use to get what he wants? We've seen that cooperatives have been very prolific with farming. They've been prolific with the uh, transport. We used it back then in Lagos. All those BRT buses did not belong to the government. They belonged to the Bros Franchise co fr uh, Cooperative. And that was the cooperative of the former Molue owners that we helped them set up. And we use it with taxes. They formed the cooperative. We supported and guaranteed loans given. So we want to do the same thing with housing. Form people into cooperatives, support them to get land. They will get a loan. They know how to do their thing. Just enable them to move on in a way that they are used to. Try to force them into formal arrangements. Then you can lend to the cooperative. The cooperative knows how to collect money from every member. You can't. And they have their own informal way. They keep their own records. Whether it is the mechanics, whether it is the welders, whether it is the market women, whether it is the small, small farmers, they know how to go and buy one tractor that everybody owns, but nobody owns. And they use it and they collect and they pay. So we are, we'll soon launch the cooperative housing cooperatives that enables us to help them on in the way that they, they uniquely can, can do things for themselves. Let me give you the ones I can easily remember. The Federal Mortgage Bank, the Federal Housing Authority, and then I think the Federal Housing Authority has gone into mortgage banking, etc. And we are trying to rearrange all of that. Mortgage refinancing uh, institutions set up by the 
last administration. So again, we we need if you don't have a mortgage, what is the mortgage refinancing institution refinancing? So uh, some realignments need to be done. Nothing, nothing extraordinary that hasn't been done. Bring more professionalism into this, into this, this, this sectors. Uh, let people stay focused on their core competence and core mandates. Federal mortgage banks stay more focused on on on, on uh, banking and the mortgage side of it. Uh, expand the national housing fund base. Uh, make eligibility and accessibility easier. That's your core mandate. L uh, as much as possible, refrain from getting involved in constructing houses. That should be FHA's mandate. They have the construction personnel capacity. They too should stay away from trying to finance construction and so on. Those are things that we are talking about and how to and all of this is inherited baggage from <laughs> the past. But we we have clarity where we should be headed. We are as a government working on paying debts. Capturing all the previous debts, power, works, everything. This wasn't done before. In the same way, we are gathering the inventory of our assets. Because that is how any undertaking should really be run. That's when you can know the balance sheet of the company. Nigeria must be run like a corporate enterprise that it is, with very high governance principles, knowing what it owes and knowing what it owns. And I am so confident that when you put everything together, what Nigeria owns is a lot, lot larger and more profitable than what she owes. And that makes her a very viable and worthy going concern.